Okay, this experiment is to remind you of how we make a salt from an insoluble base, in this case it's copper oxide, and an acid. Now notice the acid is an irritant, so as usual, if they, you have to write about a risk assessment, you talk about lab coat, goggles, if you spill anything, you mop it up straight away, spill it on your hands, you wash it off with water. So, I'm going to measure out 25 centimetres cubed of my acid. I'm going to put it in a beaker, and then I'm going to add my insoluble base. In this example, it's copper oxide, which is a black powder, and not a lot seems to happen. I'm adding an excess, more than enough. That means that we can guarantee all our acid is going to be used up in this process. You might say, well, if all the acid is used up and you've got excess base, that won't be neutral. But in fact, it will be because our base is insoluble. Now, next step to speed up my reaction, because you can't actually see anything happening there, is to heat it up. So I'm going to... Give it a bit of heat and stir it at the same time to stop it spitting. And an exam question often asks, why do you heat the solution? Why was the solution heated? Nice simple answer to speed up the reaction. You remember all the ideas you have to say about particles and why heat speeds up a reaction. I'm going to stop heating that now actually because... Um, it's already heated up quite quickly. Remember, if a question asks you, why does heat speed up a reaction? It's the case of the particles going to move faster, they'll have more energy, so they will collide more often, and, even more importantly actually, they will collide with more energy, or more impact. Now you might just about be able to see a hint of colour, uh, although it probably still looks quite black. Um, there's a t tiny hint of blue there. Um, here's one I prepared earlier, which is very blue because the reaction is complete. Now, as I say, I've got excess copper oxide, the black solid that's making that very dark. So my next step is to filter it. And this is how I get rid of that excess. As I say, because we've got excess, we can guarantee that the acid has been used up. Pour the copper solution. You can see there's a lot of black solid left behind, but we're filtering nice and rapidly there, and within a few seconds we should have a nice solution of copper sulphate. It's a solution so, as in the last video, if you want to change your solution into a solid, if you want to get crystals of copper sulphate, you've now got to evaporate off the water. Now, you could just leave it in a warm place, or to speed it up, as before, you can heat it with your Bunsen burner. So I'm just going to get rid of the filter, and here's my evaporating basin. Put it on a heatproof mat again, and away we go, heating our copper sulfate solution to evaporate all the water off to leave you with crystals. And like before, here's one I prepared earlier. You can see there's still some solution left in the bottom of that, but there's also some nice blue crystals of copper sulfate. And that's how you get a salt from an insoluble base. One big difference between the soluble base and the insoluble base is if it's insoluble, you filter off excess solid. 